Kia ora and greetings from Aotearoa, New Zealand. My name is Anya Biazik and I work as a library manager in Thames Coromandel District Council, Aotearoa, New Zealand. Thank you for the opportunity to reflect on one of the global trends I've identified and also present my call for action. People around the world are on the move in regions, countries and between continents. Their motivations is to improve their lifestyle, mobile working, learn something new or wind down their lifestyle. No doubt they contribute many experiences, skills and perspectives to their new communities, to their new neighbourhoods. They also bring their expectations of advanced, customised, faster and cheaper services. In case of libraries, in schools and universities, in public and special libraries, the well-resourced libraries will thrive on the stimulus to innovate and satisfy the newcomers' expectations. They innovative co-designed services, spaces, collections and partnerships will work in tandem with the community and library users who have a drive for learning and leisure reading, for innovation, for placemaking, for the sense of belonging and for the healthy lifestyle. Now the risk here is that the less funded, under-resourced libraries won't be able to keep up with the trends, stagnating further, deepening the divide and in result providing inadequate service, now potentially, eventually disappearing. This gap may result in further impoverishment of the society and secondly, it may damage reputation and the value library service due to misinformation. Now before my call for action, I would like to thank IFLA and also our nationwide library associations and our library leaders for nurturing the emerging leaders and welcoming our input, sharing our perspectives, debating and implementing our solutions. Thank you. Now my call for action in the face of challenge of the global migration consists of, first of all, nurturing the lifelong learning and innovation culture among the library staff who is also on the move. Opportunities from upskilling courses to participating in conferences, from mentoring programs to piloting innovative projects. Secondly, the library leaders must provide quality information, must observe trend and projections and they must provide that information to the funding bodies to enable them to make informed and quality decisions. And thirdly, we must run library awareness campaigns in the community. Taking pride and being vocal about the library community services being an essential service in our global village. It is reassuring that the information and library professionals already collaborate in regions countries and between continents. I believe we are very well positioned to keep up with the trends and the changing world. Let's ensure that our message about libraries is heard in our regions, countries and globally. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Simpi. It's my honour to have got the opportunity to speak on this platform. The Community Library Project, or TCLP, runs four community libraries in New Delhi, India, that are free for all. I joined the library six years ago as a member. This June, I joined as a librarian. TCLP works for the free library movement. In India, people have been and still are excluded from reading because of class, caste operation, language, gender identity and many other factors. The public library system is inadequate and has various barriers to access. The free library movement has been fighting against this exclusion by building excellent free community libraries 
data for all and building equitable access to reading thinking through books and information for example in our tclp libraries we have regu regular read alouds member leader representative from the community safety and non discrimination policies and no id requirement or fees today i will talk about how the pandemic made us reimagine how community libraries can develop digital libraries according to the needs of their community a digital library cannot be a replacement for a physical library but we now have to think about what role they play in building a more equitable world along with physical libraries with an increased use of digi digital libraries readers will have more op option among different library platforms browsing books and read alouds anytime ability to attend distance workshops more freedom to choose books and share the access local news however the threat with digital libraries in india is that they will increase the divide between those who have the privilege to access online resources and those who don't the increasing number of app based digital libraries made by corporations will not not be accessible and promote critical thinking community ownership and political participation the way that physical libraries do therefore we need one free library movement that demands access to free internet digital service access to books and libraries both offline and online physical and digital branches of libraries must share the same goal of building access for all in the community actions we can take include bridging gaps to build access to online service through library programs in india there is growing digitization of external government service such as education and vaccines and many people cannot access them we are redressing this inequitable reach to government schemes and vaccine inequity through a program where members can register for a labor card or the covid-19 vaccine at the library another example is duniya sabki our digital library which means the world belongs to all of us this is a low internet use low time use accessible digital library books read alouds and relevant information arrive to the phones of community members another action is campaigning and advocacy we must continue to demand for more free libraries free internet free information and service like ration healthcare education to be offline and hold the government accountable we must do this by together collaborating with various other social justice community and library organizations thank you my name is lara pu and i'm the project leader learning city at wollongong city libraries which is just south of sydney in australia i've worked in the field of adult education for nearly 20 years before transitioning across to project management in community education. My role at Wollongong City Libraries is to drive a whole of council citywide initiative to establish Wollongong as a UNESCO accredited learning city by 2024. The 2030 agenda for sustainable development will have a major impact on the way libraries work over the next 10 years. The role of libraries has been evolving since their inception over 2000 years ago when they were record rooms or archives. In the 1900s, the key principle behind libraries was to provide equitable access to information to all members of society, rich or poor. While this key principle still stands, our scope of work has broadened to include addressing cultural, economic, environmental and social matters in our collections, displays, events and community learning programs. At present, councils across Australia are pledging their commitment to, to the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. So what does this mean for libraries? According to UNESCO, Every goal in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development requires our communities 
to have the knowledge, skills and values to live in dignity, build their lives and contribute to their societies. Therefore, education will be key to empower our communities to achieve these goals. It's time for libraries to adapt and lead the way forward. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development presents the library field with a unique opportunity to evolve further over the next 10 years by expanding the role we play in achieving community and global goals. Wollongong City Libraries, for example, is now well positioned to lead a strategic whole of council project to establish Wollongong as a UNESCO learning city and contribute more significantly to the achievement of the sustainable development goals. So what is a learning city? According to the UNESCO Institute for Lifelong Learning, learning cities foster individual empowerment as well as social, cultural and economic development through lifelong learning initiatives. Lifelong learning directly addresses two sustainable development goals. Number four, quality education for all, and number 11, building sustainable communities and cities. The UNESCO Institute for Lifelong Learning provides us with a clear framework and resources for building a learning city, as well as a guide to action for learning cities and the sustainable development goals. So what does this mean for Wollongong City Libraries over the coming years? The Learning City Project sees our library leading a strategic initiative to bring together learning stakeholders from across council to take a more coordinated approach to, to the design, delivery and evaluation of all of our community education programs. At present, we have established a working party with representatives from the Art Gallery, Youth Services, Environmental Services, the Botanic Gardens, Recreation Centres and even our cemeteries to map out the ways in which we all use lifelong learning to achieve our community goals as well as those global sustainable development goals. Together, through the Learning City Project, Libraries is leading an initiative that breaks down silos and aligns our community education work more strategically with council strategies as well as operational plans. So, what can libraries do? In response to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, libraries will need to broaden their scope of work over the next 10 years in two ways potentially look into the UNESCO Global Network of Learning Cities, as well as the link between learning cities and the Sustainable Development Goals. And secondly, work more collaboratively across our organisations and communities and embed the Sustainable Development Goals and, count and community goals into our library strategies. The next 10 years will see libraries evolve and, and adapt once again in a complex, rapidly changing world. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning to Mr. Stephen Weiber as a manager in policy of IFLA. Thank you for inviting me for this sharing ideas of trends and futures of libraries. My name is Kudri Ali Aubaka and I'm representative from Malaysia. So these are the trends that have been identified by me in Malaysia since uh, I have experience in library field. So these six are the namely identified that I have sought. Firstly, the e-news. Second is e-books. Thirdly is e-journals. Fourth is e-examination question. Fifth is the library orientation. And lastly is integrated library system. So what are the implications? for the next 10 years in library field. As current situation of uh, adaption current technologies, library field itself have grown and evolved certain degree of its nature. For instance, e services provided by many institutions in Malaysia. This shows that another 10 years will have replaced partially digital services. Not to mention, some of other library that facing tight budget will also cannot cope with another 10 years ahead of technologies. But 
they will primarily exchange few of its services to emphasize digital service, but not all. Thirdly is that in terms of career growth, a librarian should keep the pace of changes as recent demand in marketing in order to promote their collection or services for their patron. Lastly is division of library knowledge. In managing a library could get involved for the next 10 years by getting which may encourage the transition of management within the library. So these are the purpose of action for the library field which I thought that it could be important. The first one is librarian professionalism. Second is to join any Twitter or any socialized events which relate with the library in order to get in order to get and gather uh, more ideas and relate to the library as it will improve current state of the library that the person or professional works with. Lastly is try to get involved in any international or national events in relation to the library fields. So these are the three proposed actions that should the uh, library field take action into it. So thank you again. Hello, this is Christopher Gias speaking from New Caledonia. I am currently acting as director of the Bernal Library, which is uh, New Caledonia's territorial library. As you can tell, I am not a native English speaker. Uh, I usually speak French, but I will uh, use English to address my colleagues in the region. Sorry for my accent, everyone. We're here to address the foreseeable trends for libraries in the future. My opinion is centered on the Pacific libraries, but I guess this reflection will sooner or later extend to many libraries in the world. As for the Pacific, it seems obvious that climate change and the creeping economic crisis will be major issues for our societies. Storms are getting stronger. We're witnessing floods, droughts, devastating fires. Climate change is already impacting the world severely. If you live by the sea like I do, you probably cannot ignore the rising sea level. It's uh, no time for skepticism anymore, or, or else it's denial. How are libraries affected today, or will be affected in the near future? First, we need to reconsider our building standards. Where and how do we build libraries? The rising sea will induce an extension of the floodplains and coastal risk also, especially for islands exposed to cyclones. Building is planning, so we have to address these changes and build in areas that will remain safe in the future. We also need stronger buildings to face the next generation storms. We build for decades to come, and unfortunately our building standards um, do not evolve fast enough. They do not take scientific forecast into account yet to anticipate the change. We may have to advocate at our own level, but that's a very difficult thing to do. Second, we will have to rethink uh, our services to adapt to this new era. It is easily foreseeable that the convergence of climate change, the COVID pandemic and other factors will have harsh consequences in the years to come. In times of economic difficulties, people need strong library services more than ever. They need libraries to be free in order to provide equality of access to relevant tools and resources. We are already witnessing this shift towards very down-to-earth needs. That involves transmission of trad traditional know-how, more than virtual reality experience indeed. The technological novelties will provide useful uh, tools, probably, but will obviously not be an end in themselves. In my opinion, independent learning, empowerment, and community projects will be amongst our li library's priorities in the near future. We know library, libraries have constantly been struggling for resources. If they fail to meet these challenges, they may be weakened or even just disappear. On the other hand, if they succeed, they will remain and strengthen their central and special position in our societies. 
We just need to be realistic about the deep changes to come and act accordingly. Thank you very much from New Caledonia. Have a good time, IFLA members. Bye-bye. Kia ora, ni hao. I'm Yang from Christchurch City Libraries, New Zealand. I work at Turanga, Christchurch Central Library, on the Owahatanga creativity floor. Turanga was built after the Canterbury earthquake and opened in October 2018. The Owahatanga floor has a focus on creativity with a diverse range of collections and a makerspace. The idea I shared on the library trends in the next 10 years is that the library being the sandpit for communities to come together to engage with high technologies, to explore, to tinker, to innovate. And this is the why for Owahatanga. The development of Makerspace has led us to rethink about our services, how we define ourselves in the local and international environment, and how we work with our local businesses. So what are the implications of Makerspace development for the library field? First, we need to ask, us, ask ourselves our point of difference from other Makerspaces, university, YMCA, schools. We need to be good at identifying customer and community needs, gaps in our services, and opportunities for collaboration. For example, Makerspace in Turanga is where students continue to practice technical skills and build up their portfolio after their study. And students had access to resources such as equipment, software, uh, and technical help when they were studying. However, when they finish their uh, qualification and start job seeking, many of them lose their skills. They lack the access to resources they had to practice. So make space in public libraries provide the platform for them to maintain their skills and critical to their future careers. Another example is that the public library make space supports teachers upskilling in various technologies. So tertiary spaces are restricted by the curriculum. So library make space is the breeding ground for organic learning and is more responsive to learning trends. Another implication is that the library makes space is driven by partnership and collaboration and is supporting entrepreneurship. At Turanga Make Space, we had a creator in residence uh, from Remix Plastics. She collected all the 3D printing wastes and melt them up and press them, press them into panels and use the laser cutter to cut them up into different pieces. And she turned the pieces into earrings, pendants and other type of ju jewelry. She did prototyping at Turanga Make Space and learned some new skills from our specialists. So a library make space also provides a pathway or space for people to express their identity through creativity. We had Maori and Pacifica students blending traditional design with contemporary pra practice. And they were inspired by witnessing the possibility and doability from observing others in the space. So the actions we would like to focus on is to collect more qualitative data and shifting our focus from transactional to transformational. How the makerspace has impacted on people's lives. What are the stories to tell? Another action is that we recruit for the diversity of background, knowledge, skills, and interests. We have artists in our team. We have people interested in sewing, embroidery, 3D printing, and the laser cutting. So our people can quickly build connections with our customers. So we can link them to the creative resources they need and have the expertise to support their project. And thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to present the ideas. Thank you. Hi. My name is Nura Examovaturik and I'm school librarian from Kazakhstan. So today I would like to talk about how school librarians can help to tackle misinformation and promote information and media literacy skills in their communities. Um, 
In June 2021, it was uh, announced that media literacy is likely to be incorporated into the national curriculum standards here in Kazakhstan. This creates an unprecedented opportunity for librarians to step in and help to deliver and facilitate this process. I think uh, more than anything, what has prompted this decision is the fact that uh, during the current pandemic, social uh, and uh, social media and uh, various information sources uh, sometimes uh, provide information that uh, people cannot interpret um, in a way that would be understood by them. Like, you know, there are conflicting pieces of information about mask wearing and vaccinations, and as well as, you know, the origins of SARS-CoV-2, which is why information and media literacy is so important. And this trend is going to be even more predominant, I believe, in the next 10 years, you know, with the uh, resurgence of AI, as well as uh, different technologies such as deepfakes, I think it's more and more important to cultivate these skills. And even more so on a school level, you know, starting with children so that they grow up with this awareness of what they're seeing and how they're, you know, how they're interpreting information. So in order to sort of step into this information literacy, um, milestone. Uh, what libraries can do, we should start with directing our patrons into reputable sources of information, to the reputable like resources. Uh, many libraries around the world, they already do that. So, for example, Pushkin Library in Özgemen in Kazakhstan already uh, publishes on their website, you know, links to resources, reputable resources about COVID-19 in both Kazakh and Russian languages for their communities. Second step that the librarians can do is to actually become the active, proactive facilitators and deliverers of information literacy curriculums. There are so many resources that are available to us, um, such as uh, curriculums published by UNESCO or Common Sense Media or our local partners. For example, that media literacy curriculum I was talking about in the beginning uh, was written by media.net and internews.kz with the help of USAID uh, organization. And last but not least, librarians should be trained in media literacy, not through our formal education, but also on the job with the help of our community partners, as well as our community members so that we can stay relevant and show our dedication to what we're doing. I believe this uh, kind of activity will help to invigorate the profession and uh, help to promote uh, what we're doing. Yuval Noah Harari in his book, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century, has said uh, that schools uh, shouldn't just teach information, they should also equip our students with the skills to discern between different types of information. We do not claim to know everything as librarians, but we are willing to learn and we are willing to to show that we care about our people. Thank you. Bula Vinaka and hello. My name is Liviana Tambalala and I am the Deputy University Librarian at the University of the South Pacific. Laudala Campus, Suva, Fiji. This is a main campus academic library in the USB network of 27 libraries located in nations of the South Pacific and spread over millions of miles of Pacific Ocean. I wish to thank the International Federation of Library Association, IFLA, for inviting me to share my ideas with participants at the World Library and Information Congress Emerging Leaders Session focusing on Asia and the Pacific. The trend I have identified for the 2021 IFLA conference is rethinking how institutions work, particularly during this current COVID-19 academic period. Our parent organization strategic plans, in our case, the USP as an academic institution affects our missions, goals, and objectives. This will also apply in the different types of libraries we work in, whether academic, national, school, public, or special. COVID-19 is an external force 
that has affected movement of people and strict lockdowns have been implemented in certain parts of the world, including Fiji. As a result, face-to-face -face services for the library are now being replaced by online or virtual services. Although we do not know the length of this pandemic, as service providers that rely on our users for employment, we need to be proactive and provide services that meet our users' needs in this environment. Our services need to be moving from just-in-case to just-on-time delivery. It is an ideal time to rethink and modify services to align with our employer strategic goals. At the Lodala main campus of the University of the South Pacific Library, we have introduced new initiatives to support the teaching and research needs of our academic staff and students who are our core customers. Some of the services that we have introduced include one, timely communication with library users through email, other social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter, and our website regarding existing and new virtual services. For example, our list of library databases, open access resources with ebooks accessible off campus, including relevant LibGuide links, and Ask a Librarian service. Two, work online information research skills, virtual sessions for the Fiji and regional campus network, replacing the walk-in face-to-face walk sessions conducted by liaison librarians. Emphasizing on our liaison librarian's role as mediator between users, academics, and meeting library service needs. Number three, collaborating with the Lothala USB Students Association to loan out laptops and tablets to full-time postgraduate and undergraduate students who live off campus without one and meet the eligibility criteria. Number four, opening the general collection, a unique Pacific collection and the Lower Pacific Islands and Marine Resource Information Systems Library for academic and administrative staff browsing and borrowing every Thursday from 9 a.m. 1 p.m. in semester two with COVID-19 protocols in place. Number five, courier service for print general collection titles needed by our students and staff and having a return box at the security gate for easy access to users who cannot come physically to the library to return their books. Number six, a semester one user survey on library services during semester one when the Fiji libraries had to close during the COVID-19 lockdown, where we could gauge the quality and appropriateness of our services against user expectations and needs and making improvements where needed. These are just examples of the initiatives we are currently employing as we continually review our support for learning and teaching in order to remain relevant during this COVID-19 environment. Some of you may already be doing this and other initiatives not discussed here. And it is during a conference like this that we share our ideas and help each other fulfill our responsibilities to our users. Thank you for taking the time to listen. And we nakapoka levu, IFLA executives, for giving me the time to share my thoughts. Thank you once again. Modern technologies in libraries, the fourth industrial revolution. What is the fourth industrial revolution? New ways in which technology becomes embedded within societies and even the human body. Technological revolution that is blurring the lines between the physical, digital, and biological spheres. American technology breakthroughs in a number of fields in libraries including Internet of Things, Augmented Reality, Big Data, Blockchain, and Cloud Computing. Internet of Things 
One of the most recent changes in technology is the shift from the Internet of Communication to the Internet of Things. Uses of Internet of Things in libraries, preservation of books, locating books and other materials, smart library buildings, theft management, smart circulation control. Augmented Reality Augmented Reality is a technology that integrates the real world into the virtual world by adding digital elements and data such as a sound, image, videos, uses of augmented reality in libraries, helping the user to read the span of books. The learning courses inside the library are linking user between the real world, virtual tours inside the library, and giving users information about every corner of the library. Big data is a term describing the story and analysis of a large and or complex data sets using a series of techniques. Big data analyzing techniques in library are machine learning techniques, data mining techniques, signal processing techniques. Blockchain Blockchain technology is opening new opportunities apart from its application in financial services. Libraries have a major opportunity to use blockchain technology to advance privacy for users, increase collaboration, and transform the way they work with each other and their communities. Cloud computing Cloud computing helps the integration of libraries in an easy manner. Cloud computing offers users, centers, multi-level services. These days, most of the libraries are moving towards cloud computing technology for maintaining digital libraries and social networking with the multiple flexibility. The fourth industrial revolution and its application affected on the current and future work of libraries, and the information specialist should keep pace with developments to find a place in the modern period.